Hey up everyone, what's going on and welcome back to Sheffield United, where you may remember from the last episode I had over £100 million in the transfer kitty if I so desire to use it. I have £11 million left. Two incoming players, one outgoing player. We'll start with the out as we always do, and that out is the loan of Marcus Edwards to Marseille. Hopefully this one is actually wanted by Marseille. Oh dear. But it's a player who hasn't really lived up to his potential, in my opinion. Two and a half stars, maybe four. Never really been too great for us. 6.8, I think, is the average. Not bad, but not great either. He's got a lot of great stats. His physicals, I now realise, some of those physicals are really quite poor. 10 stamina, 10 natural fitness will be a hindrance in his later career in particular. But he's had a good start over there at Marseille, though. 7.4 and two starts. Has got injured again, though, which, bizarrely, he's not injury prone according to his profile, but... Between him and Cairnado, one of them was always injured at any given point last season. I'm also trying to cast my mind back two seasons of why he only played 11 games in his first season here. I can't remember why that was the case. Injuries maybe, but doubled his output the following year. Five goals, five assists, one player of the match. Not worth over 100 grand a week though, in my opinion. And that's what he wanted. So unhappy player out on loan. <clears throat> right then, we got it. It's a lot of money. I managed to finally persuade him to take less wages than Neymar. Not by much, and we are definitely paying him more money than is absolutely necessary for a player of his quality. But it's Harry Maguire, he is homegrown club, which means we actually have four homegrown players back. All of them we've had to buy back from other clubs, but we actually have four players that are homegrown club. Ramsdale, the backup goalkeeper, who I did actually tie down to a new contract, eventually, he got over himself. Maguire, of course, Carl Walker at right back, and Dominic Cavallone up front. So... There is actually a fifth one I completely forgot, and that was David Brooks. I did consider it with the outgoing of Marcus Edwards, but I, th I think we've got enough. I swear I actually had a bid accepted on David Brooks, and then it just never materialised as a contract. I don't know what happened there, but ah oh well. Ham Maguire, homegrown club. The attributes speak for themselves. He is an elite centre-back, no matter what people will say. 30 years of age, we've got a few years of him. Just under £40 million. I think we had a really good deal there. For an English player of that quality, just in general, just under £40 million, I think is a really good deal. Played hardball, but he's here now. Consistent, likes big games. Homegrown club. Tick, 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 tick. All the ticks. It's a shame he missed Neil Warnock, who retired at the end of last year, but the Sheffield project is, well and truly, I'd say complete. David Brooks, I'm sorry, mate, but we don't need you. At this stage, if we sell Callado, I'll get him in, but that was the big one. The remainder of... The transfer spending is on Anthony Martial. Yeah, I'm as surprised as you are. This essentially came about because I noticed he was unhappy at Tottenham. Both of their strikers were unhappy, Anthony Martial and Maxi Gomez. I inquired about both of them. They won £140 million from Maxi Gomez, so I went for Anthony Martial, which I think is all right because you can also cover left wing if absolutely necessary as well in a pinch. Tributes speak for themselves again. Not really a leader. Can't really tackle too much, but it's still three more than Neymar has in that department. Can't jump, but his natural fitness is great. His stamina is great. All the physicals are great. Finishing ability is good. 16 composure too. Backup striker? He has agreed to be a squad player on 110 grand a week, but he, he's not playing backup. He's not playing backup. Two appearances, two goals, 7.15. But I don't know what's going on at Tottenham, by the way, just to upset all their strikers, but we've profited. £47.5 million up front. There is a hefty 50 games played deal involved there, which I think might take it to 55 all told, which will nice, keep the nice trend of going 45, 50, 55 in his transfers. At the moment, we're splitting the difference. So either way, it seems quite neat. And as for the games we played since the Community Shield, we did get immediate revenge against Chelsea in the league. That's the one to get. Brozovic, absolute banging goal. We'll get to that eventually. Then we lost to Everton, 3-0. Everton, quietly, by the way, becoming a bogey team. Had escaped my attention until we lost to them again this year. One win out of seven. It's not just Liverpool FC, it's the entirety of Liverpool we seem to have a problem with. At least we ended the Man United bogeyness last time last season, didn't we? Drew with them here, nil-nil in the subsequent game. Two goals, two games without a goal had me worried, and that was part of the reason why we did get Martial in. Thankfully, Cavalier Lewin scored in that following game as well. First goal in about 14 games, I think it was, so. Welcome back, Dominic. Didn't score in the subsequent one, but as I said, Martial did as well. 3-1 against Leicester. James Madison with a penalty. Christian Romero getting his first goal for the club. And now we play Hoffenheim in the Champions Cup Group B. Well, Champions League, basically. Atletico Madrid, the big boys in our group. Celtic and Hoffenheim 
the other two. I feel like progression is somewhat comfortable, but we will do this first game nonetheless. Liverpool with an easy one, Juventus with Barcelona, two big boys in that one again. Bayern got Arsenal, so have fun there, Arsenal. Group F, weirdly weak. Benfica, Salzburg, Frankfurt and Ajax. We've also drawn Brighton in the Carabao Cup third round. And then we play them directly after us in the Premier League because that's how football manager works. I don't know if it's something in the coding that shifts the likelihood of playing a side that you're about to play anyway when it comes to drawing in cups. It's a bizarre coincidence that happens far too much to actually be a coincidence. So the other games haven't been played, I've just realised. I've not quite had a start of the match. There's been a cracker at the Estadio something or other. Meanwhile, the Unders lost 9-5. Oh, I should just mention part of the reason why getting Martial in was because Neymar got injured. So this is the current situation. I have abandoned the attacking midfielder role entirely. It was not producing results. None of the players ever performed well there. And if they did, it's because they got lucky either via penalties or via flute goals or free kicks or something like that. It never came from being an attacking midfielder. I've also ignored quite a lot of what I was told about the rate my tactic and gone for this. So now that Neymar is back, there's been a few tweaks. We've essentially swapped the sides of certain things. So Madison will be attacking playmaker on the right hand side. Neymar will be inside forward on the left as he normally is. Martial and Cavallo in both playing complete forwards might be a mistake. I might switch him to actually I think he wants to be attacking forward. Can you let me do it, please? Thank you. Jesus Christ. Tobias and McTominay at the moment are box-to-box -box and ball-winning midfielder. I'm not sure who to play there today. Boswitz and Burge will hopefully get over their differences eventually, but Chaka in goal, Meza, Romero and Maguire. Fafana not at full fitness, and I kind of want to play Maguire. Fafana is better star rating than Maguire, which has made his wages incredibly awkward, but Aaron's on the right-hand side, has two assists already, so fully taking on the Walker mantle there. Brozovic and Burge, Neymar, Madison, Martial and Calvin Lewin. And a lot of the instructions have been moved back again. Off on line have Luke Shaw. Also Lee Kangin, who I'm pretty certain starts at Valencia. Sorloth as well. Not sure where he starts actually these days. I'm also fairly certain Marcel Sabitzer isn't a half an iron player to begin with. Pretty certain he is at a different German club. I want to say Leipzig, but I'm not 100% confident. So yeah, so we line up now 4 2 2 2. That's the right number of twos. Pretty certain. Judging by Sorloth's shirt there, he must start a Trabon Sport these days. We'll see how Celtic deal with Atletico Madrid. Celtic regularly gains the group stage of the Champions League in-game. A far cry from what's happening in the real world, where they're struggling with St Mirren. Well, it's a thrilling first 20 minutes, folks. Why does this keep happening? Apart from the Manchester United match, at least all of the games in between, between the Community Shield and now, have been somewhat interesting. Brozovic, good. I had a minor worry I'd left it on commentary only there, but there was a highlight, so good. They are pressing high up, but Maguire on the ball, he's been booked. One thing I have done is on central defence, I've changed one of them to just normal defender. So we don't have one sort of just being regularly defending and then one actually ball playing. That was something I took from Rate My Tactic, and I kind of agree with. Aaron's maybe with another assist here. No, well challenged there. And that was the highlight. Good defensive play. I said it before. It's nice to see it as a highlight, but boy is it dull. Can we be a little bit better in the second half? Thank you. Max Aarons and Carver Lewin connecting the England players. Obviously, Madison on that right hand side. There's a nice sort of English connection on that right hand side now between Aarons, Madison, and Carver Lewin up front. Carver Lewin, oh, close. And obviously, Maguire's on the right hand side of the defence as well. So it's basically all English apart from Burge. And I can put McTominay in there for a British connection, at the very least, not English, of course. Can we, like, do something, though? I'm just taking off my most tired players. I mean, you can probably afford not to win this, but it would be nice to actually do it. Neymar is on the free kick, as he has requested. I'm pretty certain his skin tone and game is a bit wrong there. He scored it. Makes the focus on him right now a little bit more awkward, I suppose. But there's Neymar. And Glassy, not great from him. It's a moment of magic from Neymar, which has settled this one by the looks of things. Yeah, no more highlights. Well, that was a throw, Eric. Thank you for that. Both sides combined to have an XG of 1. Switch to 4 2 2 2. Win two games in a row, 2 1 and 3 1, and then boring 1 0. It's Neymar again. And that's why you don't take him off the pitch, folks, as well. Apparently, it was only good for 75 minutes. I'm glad I forgot. Cristiano Ronaldo is still playing. Messi retired. Ronaldo didn't, clearly. 38. Did Messi actually go on to do anything? No. 
As for when I'll bring you back, Atletico Madrid and Liverpool's looking quite tasty in the middle of November there. I'm trying to spread out these games a little bit more now that we've obviously we've achieved FA Cup and Premier League at this point. So it's a case of just retaining them as best as we can going forward. Atletico, and, Atletico Madrid and Liverpool, I think that's going to be the crucial match in the group. And obviously Liverpool in the league is always going to be a big game. The bogey team, of course, we would like to beat them eventually. They're currently top of the table, by the way. I'm showing you this. We are in sixth. Three teams on 12, three teams on 10. It's quite tight already. Fulham not having a good start. And in terms of season preview, that's how that looks, by the way. Neymar's not in the Dream 11. What? Sancho has usurped him. How rude. But anyway, I will see you for those two games next time out. Until then, thank you for watching. Cheerio.